Chef Ray Jones, and this is How to Cook Like a Bajan. And today, we are going to the classic, the ultimate, the quintessential Bajan dish, cocoa and flying fish. And don't ask me where I get my flying fish from. So, it's gonna be a really exciting episode. We're not gonna catch the fish, but we're certainly going to the market. And this one over here, sashimi mac and shikoku in the microwave. It's gonna be interesting. So saddle your horses, let's ride. Now, for making kuku the traditional way, we're going to start by setting up our okra slush. Do, do. Little oil, just a touch, pan warm. Now, the cornmeal has been soaking. You can soak it for maybe 15 minutes or so. But I actually like to put mine in a little earlier than that because to me, the longer it soaks, the quicker it cooks. Yeah? So, warm onion, a little garlic. Also, gonna get a little thyme in there. positive things are happening. So I just want the onions to get a little glassy, but already it smells like, you know, kuku and flying fish on the way. It smells like my grandmother cooking. All right, in with your okra. And your water. Perfect. We're just gonna let this simmer a few minutes and then we're gonna strain it. So as you can see, slush is developing nicely. We're just gonna let it simmer a little bit and then we're gonna get our kuku on. Cornmeal is indigenous to the Caribbean region and it's been around for about 9,000 years. Okra comes to us via West Africa. The Igbo word for it is okuru, so I guess you know where we got our pronunciation from, yeah? Right, this is ready, so now I am going to Strain off the offers and get set up. Mm -hmm. So my cornmeal has been soaking and I think that's gonna give me a better end result. So why use a cuckoo stick? Because it's traditional, this is how it's done. It helps smooth it helps give you a smooth cuckoo without luck. Yeah, the ancestors are watching us, eh? This, this is how you make cuckoo. You need a, you need a cuckoo stick. Also to keep children in line, but another story. I can go in with my oat for split. Put it all one time. Just put it up. Let's see what's up first. Mm -hmm. Get all that swirling in. Mm. So this is what you need it back. When you put in the oat crust slush, the cornmeal tends to clump together. So then your job is to incorporate it using the back. Okay, this is a lump, not a low dish. So you're gonna work this arm today. Don't work this arm today. Yeah, good rhythm going. Alrighty. You're not gonna start constantly, but you're definitely gonna keep your temperature, your, uh, your stove down, and you're gonna, a regular stir, not constant, but you're keeping it moving. You can do it a little touch more. I'm gonna add a smidgen. 
There you go. Now, you know that the cocoon is getting close to home when you hear that sound. Fluff, fluff. I don't know if you can hear the sound over the hum of the microwave, but you know, fluff, fluff. You hear the sound? Now we're getting somewhere, yeah? So let's throw in our okras now. Give them a minute in there. Of course, the amount of slush you put in depends on how you like your okra. You like it hard, you like it soft, that's up to you. I like it just that. We're gonna taste. Yeah, time for some anchor butter. No, if you are lactose intolerant, instead of anchor butter, we're gonna get you some sunflower olive oil health bread, right? I remember I said, if you cannot have gluten, if you cannot have dairy, if there's something you can't have there's always an alternative so we're always going to do both here let me finish my cuckoo mm -hmm. oh, drop the temperature way down a little salt a little pepper All right, so you know, let it cool down a little bit and we're gonna get working on our flying fish gravy. That's what's next. At Dwellings, we believe that home means happy. That your home is a place where you do what you love. With the things that you love. And the people who you love. That's why our selection of housewares and fine furnishings is designed to inspire your dream home dwellings. It's time for our flying fish gravy. Look at that. Prep. <laughs> Get started. Get our pan hot. So, we have our garlic, our onions, our thyme, we have our tomatoes, we have our curry, our turmeric, yeah? And we also have our Bajan seasoning. We're gonna season up our flying fish shortly. So let's just get the gravy going. And then we're gonna put the flying fish into simmer. When you put the garlic or the onions in the oil, little bubbles should come up. It should start cooking. So if that doesn't happen, then the pan is full. I like to start my gravy with a little oil and a little butter. Yes, for the butter to go in. So I'm going in with my garlic, my onions, same time, dropping my heat down because I don't want to burn them. We're gonna put a little pinch of thyme in there. Yeah, and I like to just, you're not cooking them, but you're just slightly toasting the spices. I find it gives you a better end result. So, getting in my turmeric. Too much turmeric, it'll be a little bitter, so gentle. Teaspoon or so should be good. Getting in my curry powder. Okay. A light toast. You could dye clothes with turmeric. That's how beautiful the color is on turmeric. Look at that. So, I'm getting that smell. I'm going in with my tomatoes. So, while we're in on the tomatoes, to 
pull themselves together, I am going to season and roll some flying fish. Now, that was a trip to the market that I will not soon forget, yeah? So watch out for that. Okay, look at those onions and that garlic and that tomato. Now I'm gonna add a little water. Not too much, just enough. And we're gonna turn that down to simmer while we get the flying fish ready. Yes, yes. Look at that color. Mm. All right, so. So I have, the, they already been lemon salted and they're just waiting for me to set them up. I'm gonna do five, I like odd numbers. Yes. Got some Bajan seasoning here. We're gonna season between each fish. Pack it in as the flavor. Get it in between. Yes. Perfect. You know, this is Bajan cooking, so everything got to have a taste. There ain't nothing. Nothing's gonna be bland, yeah? Everything's gonna have a wonderful flavor. So that's one. See, it has in chives, it has in thyme, it has in marjoram, has in onions. Um, it has a little vinegar in it, a little curry powder because that's how I like mine. And then that flavor will go back with the flavor in the gravy. You can also make the gravy to go with tofu from anything else. You can make it for salt fish, you know, Bajan's like salt fish. Um, you can also make it with lamb. You can get lamb gravy, you can get chicken gravy, you can get beef gravy. Like, tofu is not limited to one gravy, but the national dish is tofu and flying fish, so that's what we're making. But you can have other, you can have other meat. Right, so, our gravy is coming along nicely. Time for a touch of ketchup. I'm gonna add my peppers now. I didn't add them before because I don't like my peppers to overcook. So I put them in a little later in the cooking. And when we're cooking with these vegetable scraps, we are collecting them for composting. So every day on the show, we compost. So I'm not throwing those away. I need those right here. And I need a little pepper. <laughs> now this is, this is real pepper. Yeah, this is the hot stuff. So I'm just gonna take out the seeds. And completely so I did all my peppers together. Everything in. in. Smells good to me. You know, I don't know what my Kuwait girl will say, but smells good to me. Let's get these bad boys in there. And I managed to roll them without needing any toothpick. Yay! Can I get like like applause or something here? Like Thank you. Production crew. Ah, good stuff. Everybody in. Looking good. Just gonna grab a cover. Yes. Smell it.
and ready to plate. Ah, there we have it. Delicious. Finish that with a little chive. Mm. A little parsley. Yes. Now, let me get my cuckoo. Yeah. Lovely. My lovely rolled flying fish next to it. It's fine. It came, it came on then. That's nice. All right. Just grab a spoon. Ooh. Look what I got. I'm all official. I got a plating spoon. Yes. Look at me. Look at me now. Yeah, Blazer Williams be doing it, yeah? Mm-hmm. Just a little bit over. That's right. I think a few more chives will help. More parsley. And as is traditional, the steamed sweet potato, pickled cucumber. Yes, please. I like to get some pickle on my sweet potato. Yes. So, the gravy is done. Are you ready to plate? Mm -hmm. Let's see what happened here. Here we go, here we go. It tastes like cuckoo. <laughs> so, I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next show. Uh, do you have anything you would like to say? Hi, I'm Ryan Adamson, poetic mixologist and head mixologist at the Mount Visitor Center. Now, today we're going to be making a fantastic cocktail for you using the Mount Gay EXO. It's the first EXO in the blend, in the category, and it is just a fantastic rum. It's aged in three casts, so it's first whiskey cast, bourbon, and then left to, to smooth or finish off in a cognac cast, which gives it a very nice rum finish. And the cocktail I'm going to make for you is a classic cocktail. It's the Beijing corn and oil. It was really nice after a heavy meal like cuckoo and flare fish. It's not just going to be any corn and oil, it's going to be done with a twist. So, the twist, I'm going to be using a lemongrass infused falernum and a bit of grapefruit juice. So, let's get started. Let's get some ice. a little bit. So we're going to use half an ounce of fresh, fresh lime juice. We're also going to do half an ounce of a nice falernum infused with lemongrass. We're going to use just a quarter of an ounce of fresh grapefruit juice, just to add that extra tank. ounce and a half of the perfect blend of rum for this mixture. Get all those ingredients incorporated together. I can already smell the flavor of the cocktail coming up. Add a little bit more ice. You always want to add some fresh ice to the cocktail. And then we'll finish it off with a couple drops of aromatic bitters or some sprigs of fresh lemongrass. So here we go. It's a corn and oil with a twist.
from design layouts and 3D renders and advanced digital templating guaranteeing precision to CNC machining for surfaces and cabinets you're guaranteed the perfect fit.